right. Uh, good, good practice. A lot of intensity, a lot of situations, a lot of game-like situations, getting the coaches off the field, making those guys communicate and talk and have to play and you know, deal with the good plays, bad plays, more like game situations, not scrimmage as far as we went full scrimmage, but just getting the situations like that where I call taking the pacifier away. The coaches aren't there looking over your shoulder and you got to start processing and communicating. But pretty good day, and we'll look at the film and see if it's good, bad, both ways. And uh, look at the film and see what happens. Question? Um, we know a couple of guys weren't here today, Malik mm -hmm. Henry being one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, where is Malik at? Malik, he, right now he's suspended for violation of team rules, right now. Is there further comment you can provide on that? Or? No. He'll be, he'll be, he'll be suspended for violation of team rules. Right now. Miss he's suspended right now for violation of team rules. Going down the list, uh, Coleman Chu was not, not practicing? Cole back banged up yesterday. Okay. Had a little dizziness in his head and everything that's keeping him out for concussion like symptoms. Okay. Nice to have Josh back out there today. Yeah, really good. Great to get Josh back out there. Hey, boy. That's what he said. Man, that was cool. He got he walked up to me. He said, man, that was cool because it was more like game and flying around. And But we even cranked it, the intensity. I mean, not the intensity, but the speed of it, getting the plays and you know, different things, getting them to him. Man, he, he, I said, he said, yeah, man. He said, it was, it was funny. He just, just got done saying that to me three minutes as he walked over. It's cool to get back out here. Between like Josh, Demarcus, and then Brian, I mean, what's it like to have those three in? Especially Brian, because every time we talk to you, it seems like he's doing something that kind of stands out. He is. I tell you what, Jacob, you made some things today. Well, Jacob jumped out to get glad to get him back out there after a day or two off. It was really good to see him back out there. But those guys are. I mean, they have talent. They have ability. And your edge guys, I mean, they have to be difference makers. They have to be. And that's just the way it is. I just like every week coming on. Okay. I mean, just get his treatment. You know, seems to be doing better and better every day. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, they all judge. But he seems, he, they say he's getting better and better every day. Can you assess the uh, red zone coverage? Is there anything for as far as No, I mean, he, oh, yeah, there's all, everything. <laughs> I mean, I do because... You're constantly, when you're, and the thing about the red zone, it happens different all the time. The angles, the quickness, the timing, and the more you, again, the more you put them down and educate them and what they can and can't do, and we're learning them, they're learning us, and, and they're learning what to do, you know what I mean? But he's getting better. We did some nice throws down there, made some nice plays. You mentioned consistency. Was there anything else that you want for the, the game week? Just you know what, I, like I say, you know what involves consistency? It's mental toughness. You guys just accept that we're tired or hot. You know what I mean? Or you're sore. What you just it, football is a game in any sport. I don't care what it is. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we're that's why we're grinding and pushing. We gotta get that mental toughness. Talents one, I don't care what you do, you get mentally tired. All of a sudden I don't hear part of the call. Or I just I violate for half a step. And I don't care how much ability you got. If you I violate, the only way you're gonna know what to do is that it goes in here and goes in here and then I play. You know what I'm saying? And just keep grinding that out. And I think every team in the country is probably doing the same the same thing, right? Every that's like it's not coach speak. It's real speak. I mean, that's just the reality of who could – it's like a competition. Who can get their guys mentally tough enough all the way through to deal with all those issues, you know what I mean? And people say, well, yeah, no, it's hard. Come out here and do it. When we talk about that <laughs> mental toughness, I mean, is that kind of one of the benefits of having two days where you can see how guys do in the second no session? No doubt, because you don't get many of them nowadays. You know what I'm saying? You don't get a lot of them. Well, we've been talking to you since the scrimmage after going back, uh, watching it on you know, tape a few times. Is what stood out to you maybe, uh, reevaluating it? Flashes, you saw big play potential on both sides. Uh, and then you saw not enough consistency, like I was talking about. You know, it, I'm going to tell you what, now I will say this, that day we scrimmaged, it was about as warm and as hot as it has been maybe in a long, long time. But you know what? That's a circumstance you had. And you, you get hot, you get tired. You cannot give in to that. The mental, the mental fatigue of it, the, the tiredness, the, all, the, all those types of things, you just got to grind. More consistency. And that's usually where you're at in the first scrimmage, but you, you can't accept it. You know what I'm saying? Do you get a chance to see the young guys? Do they do they change after a first scrimmage? Do they get the taste of kind of what it? Yeah, what it's I like think they are because they get a little get a little starry eyed, and then, you know, I think they go in half scared, and then they realize, oh, maybe I am. And then they realize, well, you know, it's kind of it's not that bad. <laughs> you know, it's not, you know, ain't nothing out there that, and it's it's almost like a, a reassurance that I'm okay. I can do this. You know what I'm saying? It's like anything you do. I mean, you're always in nervousness till you do it a couple times. Say, so, you know, I, I'm good enough to be here. And like I told him right there, there's not a guy out here that's not good enough to be here. There's not a guy here that doesn't deserve to be here, what I'm saying talent-wise. The thing is, what's keeping most of you guys back is generally the consistency you play with. But that's, you know, that's all the time. Mm -hmm. We're getting there. You mentioned in your opening thing about how people spend so much time talking about combines. It's more about football nowadays. So going into this game, what are you guys doing in scrimmages and just in the drills to make sure your linebackers can versatile? S situations. I mean, making them think, making them play football, making them understand where their help is. And it's a, you know, football say football is not a class. Like, you know, you talk about academic. Football is as academic as anything. You're taking a test every week. you got to fill out a test. It's just happened to be in front of 83,000 in a stadium and 20 million on a TV. 
I mean, and what your answers are and how you, in other words, you know, if I'm spilling the plate to somebody else, if I'm the guy supposed to make it, if I'm setting the edge, if I'm the blitzer, if I got the back, if I got the tight end, I mean, those disciplines. And a lot, you go back and look at the combinations of things a linebacker really has to do. It's crazy. I mean, that is a, I mean, that is a unbelievably versatile position to blitz, to play run, to be physical, to play skilled in space, to tackle in space, to tackle at the line of scrimmage and take on 300 pound guards, to have to, you know, do all the things you got to do. And, you know, and, those guys are, I, I like, they, they're starting to really progress, starting to flash a little bit. What has Roderick done to kind of turn this corner from last season? Well, I mean, I, I thought he was playing pretty good last year when he played, but I think just maturity and consistency, you know what I'm saying? How are your trucks. backup running backs doing so far? Not bad. Uh, I tell you, I mean, Jacquez doing okay, but I like the Jonathan Vickers, the way he's running. Uh, Ryan Green has, has stood out. Ryan, sometimes I think we've got to keep his eyes straight, but he made two really good runs the other day in the scrimmage, broke tackles and strong. Just staying a little more consistent. Sometimes I'll miss a read every now and then with a high violation, but I'm not. I mean, guy's doing you know much better. Uh, the young guy Rasul, I really, I mean, he he's, he's he jumps out at you now. Is there, a fine, is there a fine line? You obviously know what Dalvin can do, but you also need to keep him sharp and keep him ready. Yeah, there ones. is a fine line. How many times do you get? But in here, when we're not tackling to the ground, he's getting. I mean, we're wrapping him to death because you got. And that's what we're trying. To, you got to get in playing shape. Right. You know what I mean, you can you can tell them guys don't play, get protected. No, man, that don't work. <laughs> you got it. Football is a game. Everybody said, well, set them out and rest them. Unless you're an old, there ain't a lot of guys I've known and ever been around that can sit for long periods of time and really be sharp. You know what I'm saying? It, but you, what you got to do is keep them off the ground. Right. And it, it's a thud drill. It's not, we ain't trying to kill each other. I tell our guys out here, we, a square up shot, you hit pretty good. You don't try, but those crackbacks or blindside shots, you don't do your teammate that way. You walk up and nudge him or, you know what I mean? You, because you're going to get enough of those in the game, but you got to keep them sharp.